Well, we're so pleased to welcome back into the program uh, the founder of the Pennant Group, uh, Tom Masney, uh, sparing no expense for us going to Staples. And we hit the easy. That was easy. (laughs) Is is, uh, health insurance really easy? Health insurance is not easy. Okay. However, it's considered (laughs) easy by certain people. Mm -hmm. um, And it's the insurance companies want you to make the easy decision. Um, And a lot of consultants and brokers make the easy decision. Um, And unfortunately, like in our previous conversation, we're backed into a corner. And we don't have a lot of time to make a decision when it comes to our health insurance and what our options are. So a lot of times we hit the easy button and just go with what is comfortable, what's the status quo. We don't want to disrupt um, anything for the employers and employees. So we hit the easy button and just roll on, even if it may not be the right decision. You would think companies now in today's economy would shop around do, or are they, and I know you have a blindfold up here from a previous episode that we did, but is it just kind of blindly, let's just, I don't want to deal with it. It's Let's just keep it going, keep it rolling. Yeah, Insurance is not a sexy topic, mm-hmm. right? Nobody enjoys talking about insurance. Um, and part of the reason is we don't know why. Uh, we don't know what's driving our costs, and we don't know what we can do to control those costs. Uh, we are very limited in what you can do if you are a certain size employer group. Mm -hmm. Um, That starts at the state level, though. So, you know, I was at a conference down in Florida a couple weeks ago, and we had a representative from Texas that was talking about legislation that's being passed and presented to the state um, Congress in in their Mm -hmm. market. What needs to happen is there needs to be a movement across the state of Georgia presented to the local representatives to discuss the non-transparency of healthcare. Uh, we want and deserve the data behind our premiums. We need to understand why our premiums are what they are and why we're paying an exorbitant amount of money. Um, there's legislation in, in Florida that's been presented. It's sitting on um, the governor's desk that is opening up the curtain, per se, down to five employees. So today's market... If we're an employer and we're under 100 employees on the plan, we don't get any data. So I don't know why I'm paying. It could be a million dollars for my premium. I don't know why I'm paying a million dollars. And then when I get a 20% rate increase, I don't know why. Um, We need to know why. We deserve to understand why. Um, And that's the only way that we're truly going to lower the costs is when we start seeing that data and then we can make the adjustments. Um, That'll lead us into a a next discussion in an upcoming podcast on, you know, three different funding mechanisms. But ultimately, if the consumer can get the data and they see the data, I think they're going to be upset on what's driving their costs and who is making the money. Um, So ultimately, I know I've, I've rambled away from how do we make the easy decision and why do we make the easy decision. I think employer groups make this easy decision because they're backed into this corner and they don't know where to go. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of consultants don't want to learn what's new, right? If, if we learn what's new and what's coming, that means extra work. And that can be time consuming and it can be difficult because learning something new is challenging. Mm-hmm. So we hit the easy button because we don't have the time to get to the new product, and we don't have the time to understand and educate ourselves. Um, so it's the easy easy button for us, and it's the easy button for the employer because they don't want to disrupt the apple cart. Wow. We're continuing with uh, with Tom Masney, and again, you can go online to uh, thepennantgroup.com. Uh, Tom used to be uh, in the major leagues as a pitcher with the Cleveland Indians, hence progressive uh, field, no, no tie to progressive insurance. Of course, Tom does health insurance and uh, employee uh, benefits. And again, we will in the ne- next time talk about some different funding solutions, but um, beyond what's happening in Congress and regulations, with your boots on the ground, what do you try to do to educate people that you get in front of to look at 
some alternatives until um, maybe the government steps in. Yeah, you know, I, I think we have to meet our clients where they are. And I think that's one one thing that gets mislooked, overlooked in our industry as the, the broker consultant sometimes makes a decision for the client. Um, I don't want to make the decision for them. I want it to be our decision. Um, I put myself on the side of the table of the actual um, employer making the decision and say, hey, what is right for your company? Um, I think that gets that gets overlooked um, because there are different reasons for different products. Um, not There is no one-size-fits-all approach. And with insurance carriers today and the blindfold that they've put in, over mm-hmm. the consultant and the employer, they are dictating for us you know, what our coverage should look like. Um, and something needs to change there. You know, it's, it's an unfortunate situation. I think we're working towards a path to, to get there. Um, there's a, you know, I've got a good friend of mine, um, he's a direct primary care physician. Um, he is in the process of joining with three other um, providers here in the market and offer direct primary care solutions. Um, to me, that's an easy fix mm-hmm. for some of these employer groups or actually consumers that either can't afford insurance um, or want more personalized care. Um, employers can put this in their, their group at a very minimal cost, um, but really it gives the employees easy access. Um, all, I won't, won't say 24-7, but basically... Not five, catastrophic, but yeah, it, most everything else. You know, but it's, it's a good way for them to see a doctor, a very good doctor, Mm-hmm. Um, that can service them from A to almost Z, can't even offer prescriptions, and they're not having to pay that, that copay mm-hmm. on a per-visit basis. So that's an easy fix. Um, and then there's other products that we can layer on top of your health care or different things that we can do to your current health care plan that can make that transition while we wait for the market to change. And I should say, full disclosure, I, I'm, I'm a believer in that. We, Our family has the primary care coverage, and one of our employees, you know, as opposed to trying to, oh, I'll pay 50% of go look for a plan or whatever, I said, I'm going to pay for this. And, and then he, you know, was smart with his uh, wife's insurance. And so we just, you know, I guess it's about being flexible because – yeah, that that that's that's that side of it being easy. Um, I suppose we just have to make sure that we're dealing with the right consultant, and they don't just take the easy way out. That's correct. That's correct. Change is scary, and you know whether you're changing consultants or whether you're not changing a consultant, but you're changing a product or you're you're taking a look at it. You know, as this becomes a, a larger expense for the everyday um, consumer. Mm-hmm. It's also becoming a larger expense for the employer groups. This is a top two or three line item. Um, and it, hitting the easy button on a 10%, 20% increase every year is not sustainable. You know, at some point, we're going to have to remove that, take a chance, or roll up our sleeves and actually do some work. Um, it's about getting out ahead of it. I, you know, I look at this as most companies – I'm going to say all companies, if you offer a health care plan, you're in the health care business. If you're selling widgets, you're not a health care specialist. Mm-hmm. But if you're providing insurance for your employees, you are in the health care business and you need to manage that expense. So, you know, you need to look at your consultant, whoever that is, as that supply chain manager for you. You know, we talk about supply issues, right? That's kind of mm-hmm. the big um, buzzword right now is everybody's has supply issues. Well, what are you doing to manage that? So look at, you know, health care and employee benefits as a line item and as a supply mm-hmm. and let your consultant manage that for you. And when you pull back those layers, they need to be managing, you know, your primary and specialist, your office visits, mm-hmm. your inpatient, your outpatient, and your prescriptions. Those are the four pillars of what's in your insurance product, and that's what we need to manage. Well, what struck me about what Tom just said is I'm guessing the number one line item would be labor and employee costs. 
you wouldn't just automatically give your employees 10 or 20 percent raise every year i mean it it has to have the value so i just invite you to go to the pennantgroup.com and maybe look at a different way of doing things and uh, i think it will be easy if you do tom thank you so much appreciate it neil absolutely and uh, Tom and I are, are pleased to be here at uh, the podcast studios in downtown Augusta. If you'd like to look at some other examples of what they do, please just go to their social media channels. And uh, perhaps your organization or company would like to get involved. I've just greatly enjoyed visiting with business people like Tom to explain a little bit more about why um, you should get involved for sure.